Uh, let's get rocking and rolling here. Um, Matt, let me just for starters congratulate you on Wildflower is a great film. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and for starters, let me ask you a question you'll probably answer hundreds of times, but um, just for the for borrowing tape, the website, uh, give us the overall plot of Wildflower and what inspired you with this story? Um, well, Wildflower is about a, um, a young woman who is deciding whether or not she should uh, leave and go to college or stay and, and take care of her parents, one of whom is neurodivergent. Well, I guess both of them. Are, well, yeah, one is neurodivergent and one um, was in an, uh, a, an auto accident and you know, um, we don't quite know exactly what's going on, but but something's not quite right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, correct me if I'm wrong, but you made a documentary of the same name and same topic a few years back. Uh, what was it like, because I know people adapt screenplays and books and whatnot, but what was it like adapting a documentary into a narrative form film? Yeah, it was so basically this the documentary is 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 actually about my niece, uh, Christina, and um, and so she's this exceptional kid, and and obviously I'm I'm biased, but I think everybody uh, started to come to that same conclusion after seeing some of this footage, and and um really I I wasn't planning on doing this, I wasn't planning on taking the documentary and making it into a um, a feature. It, it just became very apparent as I was showing some of the footage to um, several people, and, and one of which was Jana Savage, who is an, my incredible screenwriter, um, that it's such a unique story and such a unique family, and there might be a more accessible way to kind of, you know, sort of sh share with, you know, share the world, um, this, this incredible family. And I think that... Um, I think for us, it was really important that we that this wasn't necessarily just something that was based on the documentary. I didn't want to recreate the documentary. And so we um, we really kind of leaned into this idea that it's an in, in, in inspired by. And let's look at it through a little bit more of a comedic lens and have and sort of have some fun with, you know, family dysfunction. I mean, I think we all kind of understand <laughs> What that is, and I think that at the end of the day, this is really a, a coming of age story uh, about a girl who just happens to be in a, you know, fairly unique family dynamic, but really going through all the same things that that lots of us go through, you know, when you know, as we're all coming of age. Yeah. So that that slightly answered uh, one of my questions down the line here. So I think I'll just kind of ask it now. But what genre would you put this film under? Oh, uh, yeah, I would say that it's it's a coming of age um, dramedy. You know, I think that, uh, you know, that to me is what 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 it is, you know, not unlike, you know, I think we, I was inspired by movies like uh, Little Miss Sunshine and, and um, Silver Linings Playbook. Um, those those were two movies I remember really kind of thinking well, about. Let me because that actually ties into another question I have. Uh, <laughs> You know, as a filmmaker, uh, what films or directors even influenced you with uh, bringing with, that you brought to the table, or what were your influences with creating this film, or just in general, I should say? Yeah, I mean, look, David O. Russell is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time, and I feel like the way he handled mental illness in *Silver Linings Playbook* was so flawless and so genius um, and delicate, you know, and authentic that that was certainly someone and a movie that really kind of um, in influenced me. Um, you know, I think in terms of handling um, a true story, you know, in some ways, um, I, Tanya, that Craig Gillespie movie, um, you know, that was a very unique, you know, sort of telling of something that we all thought we knew. Um, and I and I really loved sort of the origin originality um, with which, you know, he told that story. So I think that there were, you know, and then just movies like Perks of a Wallflower in terms of just a, a beautiful coming of age. Um, you know, John Hughes is somebody that I absolutely love and and was was hoping um, in, in some capacity to channel. Um, you know, so I think I, I had lots of, you know, sort of legends to to, to lean on and, and look at their work. Yeah, good shout outs there. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the just the production, the overall production. If this film seems like it was shot around or near Las Vegas. Did you shoot out there primarily? 
No, I'm glad that you say that. But uh, no, we shot in Santa Clarita um, okay. and sort of used that as a double for, you know, outside of Las Vegas. And we did go to Las Vegas for, uh, I think we were there for 24 hours with a scaled back crew and and just to get the stuff on the strip that you saw. And then that, you know, that scene when we're driving and then obviously uh, sort of that, you know, sort of one, one of those the ending moments that I won't give away. But so, yeah, yeah. 24 hours. Talk to me real quick about this cast, because this cast seemed like they were family off camera, too. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you assemble this team? You know, this is one of those things where I just, I, you know, I wish I knew the secret sauce because I just and I think ultimately I just got really, really lucky. They 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 just, you know, sort of connected to the material. And and you're right. They really did. There was it was a and it was a wonderful set and it was a very positive set and it was full of full of love and and I think um, I, there's no real reason I can give you other than they responded to the material and they just liked each other and we all really got along. Um, and I knew that from the very beginning. I had a a bunch of them came to my house and we kind of hung out and and ate some food and sort of. I was able to watch them behave, you know, and interact as a family. And I, I just, I went in after that day feeling so confident that these guys, that the chemistry was so um, incredible, really, um, as, as a group and as an ensemble, you just never know. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to get too personal, but I felt the film captured the essence of the child parent dynamic really well with good times and bad times. Um, is there anything you pulled from in your own experiences, whether it's childhood, or I don't know if you're a parent or not, but I just felt like someone really got in touch with that side of themselves with making this film. I didn't know if you pulled from any personal experiences for yourself. No, I, I really appreciate that. And and I, I do. I do have two kids myself. And um, actually, my daughter, Penelope, um, who's 17, wrote... Uh, two of the songs that are in the movie and she performed and sang. Um, so I do feel like it was a total family affair. And uh, and my son is the kid who uh, ended up trying to get Sharon to buy beer for him outside of the convenience store. So um, yeah, I, I look, I think that I did really, you know, lean into, and you know, lots of my own experiences and, and family anecdotes. And in some ways, in many ways, I was sort of lampooning myself and my wife that, you know, who, cause Joy and Ben are loosely based on us. So I think um, a lot of that came from, from real experiences. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in closing, uh, look, you've made a film um, with characters that are neurodivergent. And being that there's a lot of inclusiveness on screen now, what do you think the future holds uh, with kind of telling stories like this or telling story stories with characters like these parents? Oh, I really hope that we just kind of can start opening the floodgates. And I mean, I think that this shows that, you know, certainly we did a worldwide search to find Sharon and Samantha Hyde. I, I mean, I just think she's incredible. And as a performer, I mean, she she really can do anything. And so I think hopefully we are going to be seeing um, more opportunities for for underrepresented folks who are so talented. You know, that's that's kind of the, the hope. And I think we wouldn't have made this movie had we not, um, you know, found sort of our Sharon. And and look, Dash Dash Myhawk is also just uh, a, a superstar and so talented and and has been very vocal. Um, actually more recently um about you know having Tourette's and what that has meant for him and in terms of previously hiding this and and now feeling like he's able to kind of talk about it in a very real and honest way um I think this is all really really great um for us moving forward and hopefully we'll see more of it it is it is it was a great film I'll just cap things off again with just another congratulations to you on the success with the movie Oh, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much.